All right, so now we're ready to talk about double replacement reactions. I like to think about double replacement reactions as two people who have a car and they swap cars. So you're swapping the two people and so each person ends up with a new car. So it's kind of like this right here is a person and this is their car and then they're gonna trade. So blue guy was driving a red car and then they're going to swap. So now instead of the green person being with the yellow car, the green person is going to be with the red car. And instead of the blue person being with the red car, now the blue person is going to be with the yellow car. So it's an, um, a situation where you have two pairs and you change partners. So the way that I think of it in terms of chemistry is that the cation of one compound replaces the cation of the other. And we recall that cations are positive ions. So if we go back to these circles and think about them in terms of what's really going on chemistry-wise, this green and yellow together might be a positive and a negative ion. The blue and red together, let me pick a different color, might be a positive and a negative ion. And then they're going to swap partners, but you're still going to have a combination of positive and negative and positive and negative. So again, it's kind of like the two positive ions swapped to make two new compounds. The general reaction that we could look at here is AB plus CD. Again, A is positive, B is negative. C is positive, B is negative, A and C swap places, and you get AD as a new combination and CB as a new combination. Now, attention, um, when you write the products, so that's going to be the chemicals over here on the right-hand side, you need to crisscross the charges of the new ion pairs. You cannot just keep the subscripts the way that they were on the reaction side. If you come over here and you are making a new positive negative combination, like let's say that's plus two and that's minus three, you still have to crisscross those charges, just like we've been practicing all along. All right, this is just an example of what a double replacement reaction might look like. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight the positive cations, that's gonna be the lead two and the potassium. And what we see is that they are the parts that are going to switch places. So I'm going to draw those arrows showing that they're swapping. So instead of lead and nitrate being together, the lead's going to come over here and be with the CrO4, that's chromate. So again, lead's going to come over here with uh, chromate, and so we get lead chromate. Potassium's going to come over here and be with the nitrate, and so we get potassium nitrate. Okay, so we are just gonna jump into these and practice them. I'm gonna show you a trick of how I like to kind of organize my ions to be able to easily do the crisscrossing. So for number one, we have potassium iodide and lead to nitrate. And what I'm gonna recommend is that you make a little grid over here that is two by two. And this first compound here I'm gonna write those ions on the top half of the grid. So potassium is K with a plus one charge. Iodine is I with a negative one charge. The next compound is lead to nitrate. I'm gonna write it here on the bottom of the grid. So lead is PB plus two and nitrate is NO3 minus one. All right, for the reactants, we are going to combine the top two and crisscross their ions. So K and I, if I crisscross them, and I'm gonna write that down here, is going to be K I, because they are a plus one minus one charge. With a different color, I'll show that the other reactant would be the combination of PB plus two and NO3 minus one. I'm gonna write that one here. So that's gonna be crisscross down the two from the lead is going to go down there and the one from the lead or sorry from the nitrate is going to go down there but we don't need to bring the one down so that's going to be pb parentheses no3 two all right i'm going to erase these highlighted squares here and show you that now when we do the products we are going to 
make new combinations. So instead of the potassium being with the iodine, I'm going to undo that marking. This time, the potassium is going to be with the nitrate. So if I crisscross K plus and NO3 minus 1, it's 1 and 1, so that's going to be KNO3. In another color, let's go with this purple color. Lead is going to pair up with the iodine. So I'm going to draw that down here. PB has a plus 2 charge that will crisscross to the I, and so that's going to be PBI2. Okay, so that's how the grid works. We'll do some more examples, but the main idea is for the reactants, you do the top together and the bottom together. For the products, you basically do the diagonals and that creates your new combinations in double replacement. All right, the last thing we would need to look at here is make sure that we have a balanced equation. And so let's see, potassium is one and one, that's good. Lead is one and one, that's good. I'm going to look at my polyatomic nitrate. There's two of them here and only one of them on the product side. So I need to have two here. So I'm going to put a two in front of that compound. And finally, what did that do? That made it to where I have two potassiums. So I need to put a two in front of the potassium compound over here. And the one that I haven't looked at yet is iodine. I have two iodines on the left, two iodines on the right. So this is a great balanced equation. All right, let's do it again for this next compound. Or, sorry, this next reaction. We have barium nitrate and calcium carbonate. Again, I'm going to make my grid for double replacement. Barium nitrate, I'm going to put on the top of my grid here. So barium is Ba plus 2. Nitrate is NO3 minus 1. The other reactant, calcium carbonate, I'm going to put on the bottom of my grid. That's Ca plus 2 and CO3 minus 2. To write my reactants, I'm going to keep the top two ions together and the bottom two ions together. So barium with nitrate, crisscross the charges, the two will come down here onto the nitrate. The one, when it comes down, we don't have to write it. So that's going to be BA, parentheses, NO3, close parentheses, two. That's my top of the grid, barium nitrate. Moving on, next up is calcium carbonate. That's the bottom of my grid here. For my charges, I see that I have plus two, minus two, they cancel. And so that's going to be CaCO3. All right. Now, in um, my highlighter, I'm going to highlight my diagonals because that's what I'm going to write for my products. So my first product is going to be Ba and CO3. That's barium carbonate. Barium has a plus 2. Carbonate has a minus 2, so they cancel. So BaCO3 will be my formula. My other diagonal will be calcium and nitrate together. Now, calcium has a charge of plus two, that's gonna come down onto the nitrate. Nitrate has a minus one, that will just drop off. So Ca parentheses, NO3 close, two. All right, so that is my balance, or sorry, that is my equation. I don't know if it's balanced yet, so let's take a look. Barium on the left side is one, on the right side is one. Calcium on the left side is 1, on the right side is 1. Nitrate on the left side is 2, on the right side is 2. CO3 carbonate, left side 1, right side 1. I love it when this happens. It is a balanced equation, ready to go. All right, so that is how we use the grid to do double replacement reactions. Now, in order for a double replacement to actually occur, and this means like in real life, in a real experiment, two conditions must be met. Number one, both reactants need to be soluble. That means that 
the problem has to say or we have to look up and determine that they are aqueous before they react. And then at least one product must be either insoluble, which means it's going to be a solid, which we will see as a precipitate, or it is covalently bonded, or it is a gas. We are really going to focus on the one that I have the pink box around here, the insoluble product. So just to kind of review the vocabulary here, because we haven't talked about it a lot, soluble means a very specific thing. And you might want to add this into your notes. It means that it dissolves in water. So imagine something like salt or sugar. If you put it into water, it will dissolve. Insoluble, on the other hand, means that it will not dissolve in water. So think of something that you can put in the water, but it just sits there. I like to picture a rock. If you put a rock into water, it's not going to dissolve. It's not going to do anything. So the symbols that we use for these, for insoluble, we give it a little AQ. For aqueous, insoluble, we give it that S in parentheses, which means solid. So the way that we figure this out is we use a solubility chart. So we're going to practice using this chart to determine if the, col if the compounds listed here are soluble or insoluble. Now, I'm going to give you a tip. When you're using this chart, if you look at the left-hand side, which is going to be your starting point, these are pretty much all negative ions. So we want to look at a compound and look at its negative ion, find it on the list, and then kind of see what the chart says about that compound. So stick with me. Let's do a couple together and see what happens. So our first compound is potassium nitrate. Now, nitrate is the negative ion. And if we use our ion sheet, we know that that's NO3 with a minus one charge. So we're going to scan this left side of the chart to find nitrate. And I located it right here. So nitrate, let's see what it says. Soluble compounds contain nitrate with the exceptions of none, no exceptions. So what this really says, y'all, is that nitrate compounds are soluble, all of them. So potassium nitrate, which is KNO3, we would label it as AQ for aqueous. It is a soluble compound. All right, next up we have barium iodide. So in that compound, iodide is the negative ion. And so I'm gonna scan the chart for iodide. Hmm, here it is. Okay, so bar so, sorry, iodide compounds are soluble, except compounds with strontium, barium, lead, and mercury. Hey, that is one of our exceptions, this compound that we're dealing with, barium iodide. So because iodide compounds are soluble, except with barium, BAI2 is going to be insoluble, and we will label it as an S. Okay, again, I'll kind of write in again what these mean. Potassium nitrate is soluble. That means like salt, if you put it in water, it will dissolve. Barium iodide is insoluble, meaning if you put it into water, it will just sit there like a rock. Okay, next up, let me erase our notes on the chart. Next up, we have sodium carbonate. Carbonate is the negative ion. Carbonate is CO3 minus 2. So, hmm, where is carbonate on this list? It's right here. Now, this is on the bottom half of the list, so we have to pay attention. Carbonate is insoluble. So, carbonate compounds are insoluble. Exceptions include compounds with ammonium and the alkali metals. Well, sodium is an alkali metal. Sodium is a plus one group one metal. So carbonate, here's what we say here, y'all. Carbonate compounds are insoluble, except with alkali metals. So that means that it's not insoluble, it is soluble. So the compound Na2CO3, we will label it as AQ, aqueous, kind of sounds like aqua, meaning water, it will dissolve in water. 
All right, our last one here is another carbonate compound. This time it's calcium carbonate. So carbonate compounds are insoluble, except with ammonium and alkali metals. Well, this is with calcium. This is not an exception. So we simply say carbonate compounds are insoluble, not an exception. So CaCO3 is going to be insoluble that means it's going to be a solid. Y'all, calcium carbonate is literally a rock. If you've ever heard of limestone, which we have a lot of here in North Texas, um, it is a white rock. It's what White Rock Lake was named after. And it's literally just a rock. It does not dissolve in water. And so that is why we label it as a solid. It is insoluble. All right. So there are answers. We did a good job. Okay, so what is going on here? So the solubility rules for double replacement reactions. Again, these are reactions that are occurring between ions. They are swapping cations and they generally produce a precipitate. When we want to determine if a product is a precipitate or not, we will use the solubility rules like we just learned. So two more practice problems. Both reactants are aqueous solutions, so we just know already that both of these are aqueous. It says use the solubility rules to mark the precipitates with an S and soluble products with an AQ. So we are writing a full balanced equation and including now whether it is aqueous or the solid precipitate. So for number one here, I'm gonna set up my grid the first compound to go on the top of the grid is silver nitrate. Silver, it's on your ion sheet, I promise. If you look at, for it, you'll find it is Ag, and nitrate is NO3 minus one. So plus one minus one, my first compound is AgNO3, and it told me that it is aqueous. My second compound is lithium chloride. So on the bottom here, that's Li plus one and Cl minus one. That is a plus one minus one. They cancel. And so my other compound here is LiCl. And again, it said that it was aqueous. All right, I'm going to use my highlighter to highlight my diagonals. So my products are going to be Ag and Cl. They both have a plus one minus one charge, so that's just AgCl. I'm gonna leave a little parentheses there. We're gonna use our solubility rules to look up AgCl. My other product is going to be the other diagonal, which is Li and NO3. They again have plus one minus one charges, so that cancels, so that's just Li NO3. And that is AQ, whoa, I gave it away. <laughs> I already know that it's AQ, but let's go double check. So let's look up our products on the solubility chart to see if they're gonna be aqueous or soluble, or sorry, aqueous, which is soluble, or insoluble, which is a solid precipitate. Let's look up AgCl. Okay, so we focus on the Cl because that is the anion. What does it say? Chloride compounds are soluble, except compounds with silver. There it is, okay? So chloride compounds are soluble except with silver. So that means not soluble. That means it's going to be a precipitate. So my AgCl, I'm going to label it a solid. My other compound is LiNO3, lithium nitrate. Okay, so I'm gonna look up my nitrate. Nitrate is right here and they are soluble. Nitrate compounds are soluble with no exceptions. Nitrate compounds are soluble. That means that it's going to be aqueous, dissolves in water, and so we're going to call it a Q. So if we were to actually run this experiment, these two over here would be clear solutions, clear liquids. We've shown this in class a couple times. We have some um, samples of this on the Wakelet that um, is linked in Classroom so you can see it, but you would mix two clear solutions together. The AgCl solid, that would be a cloudy 
precipitate, meaning the mixture would turn cloudy and that this one would be white, it would eventually fall down to the bottom. And the LiNO3 would just, again, still be a clear solution and it would basically look like nothing. Okay, and that one's already a balanced equation, so we don't need to do anything else there. Let's take a look at number two here. Number two is sodium hydroxide and calcium sulfate. So sodium is Na plus one, hydroxide is OH minus. Calcium sulfate. Calcium is Ca plus two, sulfate is SO4 minus two. Okay, we are going to crisscross across the top to get our first compound that it's gonna be NaOH because they're both plus one minus one and the problem direction said that it's aqueous. Going to criss, sorry, not crisscross. I'm going to look at the bottom two ions for my other product. I'm saying the wrong words, my other reactant. Calcium and sulfate, y'all, they both have a plus two minus two charge, so those cancel, so it's just CaSO4. And it said that it was aqueous. Okay. To get my products, I know that I wanna do diagonal on the grid. And so Na plus one and SO4 minus two, crisscrossing is gonna be Na2SO4. AQ, I'm gonna move my grid because I need a little extra room and move it down there. So, and again, we didn't check yet to see if that's aqueous. Okay, my other product is going to be the other diagonal, CA with OH crisscrossing the charges. That's going to be CA1. OH needs two, and we're gonna see if it's aqueous or solid. All right, so first up, we have Na2SO4. We're gonna focus on the sulfate Look it up on the chart and remember that it's paired up with Na. So, sulfate. Hmm. Oh, here it is. Sulfate is right here. Sulfates are soluble except with strontium. Nope. Barium. Nope. Lead. Nope. Mercury. Nope. So this is not an exception. So we're going to know that sulfates are soluble. We're going to label it AQ aqueous. That means that it will dissolve in water. Sodium sulfate is aqueous. And now we're going to look up our other product, calcium hydroxide. We're going to remember, look for hydroxide and then see if calcium is an exception for it. So hydroxide paired up with calcium. Here we go. Hydroxide is down here. Hydroxides are insoluble, except with ammonium, nope, alkali metals, nope, calcium, mm-hmm, there it is. So hydroxides would be insoluble, but calcium is an exception, so it is soluble, so that is aqueous. Okay, so that is aqueous. So what this means here, this is actually really interesting, both of our reactants were aqueous, meaning that both of these would be clear solutions. Both of our products are also aqueous. They would also be clear solutions. What this means is you would actually see nothing. You would not get a visible reaction here because both products are aqueous. The last thing that I need to do before I move on is balance this equation. I need a two in front of the NaOH, and now it's a balanced equation. All right, this was actually a mistake. If you were looking in the notes earlier, calcium hydroxide again, according to our chart, is aqueous. All right, um, the last thing here would be a demonstration that we would do in class. Um, again, I cannot show it to you here, 
But if you look on the wakelet that we have posted for our class, you can find a video of this one, silver nitrate and hydrochloric acid. Let's go ahead and do a little um, work here to see what would happen. So what do we start with? Well, to do my grid, silver is a G plus one, nitrate is NO3 minus one. Actually, hang on. Nope, this is a little bit different from the one that we did. And then hydrochloric acid, y'all, is HCl, so that's the H plus ion with the Cl minus ion. So what do we start with? That's going to be AgCl. Miss Hammer, no. Across the top. AgNO3. That is an aqueous solution. In the demonstration or in the video, you will see that it's a clear liquid. HCl is my other reactant, HCl also a clear liquid because it is aqueous. Okay, I'm gonna switch colors now to blue and let's see what happens when we look at our diagonals on the grid. So AG and CL, one and one for the charges, plus one, minus one, so that's just AGCL. Now, we looked this one up earlier, so I'm just gonna remember that we looked up earlier already that AGCL is a solid. That is not soluble that would be the visible precipitate, the cloudiness that we would see. The other product is HNO3. Now we have not looked that one up yet today, so let's look back for HNO3. We will look up the nitrate ion. Nitrate is way up here. Nitrates are soluble with no exceptions. So nitrates are soluble. So the HNO3 would be aqueous. So again, what you would see in this demonstration, these would be clear solutions. This would be the solid cloudy precipitate. And this would be another clear solution. All right. Thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful. Again, um, we have a lot of information on the class wakelet for different types of reactions. Be sure to go and look for this particular reaction to find it. And I'll also try to remember to link it in the um, description box below here on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. Happy to help.